This episode is brought to you by Ivan. Ivan Solo. Oh, Jesus. He's <laughs> going. I was like, this is going to be something, something to start. Oh, boy. <laughs> Jared, name a player that has worn the number 50. Marlon Pickett. That'll do for me. Yep, done. Because <laughs> what does Marley and Pickett's number and our episodes have in common? Uh, it represents the same numerical value and how many episodes we have done is now Ben Brown. I should have gone with Ben Brown's. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking Ben Brown, but also at the same time, <laughs> I really think Pickett's a better pick. At yeah. Yeah. Ha- Well, that's going to be one of these episodes. <laughs> yeah. I think you didn't like that because it was Ben frowned upon. Mm. <laughs> Don't mind me. I haven't even been drinking this weekend. <laughs> and Port lost. So, yeah. Anyway. Gonna kick us off. Let's <laughs> smash some glass. <laughs> yeah. Yep, Jared, <laughs> that's the one. It's episode 50. We've made it. I don't know how. A no. lot of question marks. I've wrote here for some reason, intro and we suck. I don't think it references us. <laughs> it's weird they're the same one. <laughs> I remember yeah. I was meant to bring in a bat and I did to raise it, but that's fine. I don't have a bat. Uh, I have... Raise the something for 50. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yes! Uh, very, very good. Nice that you've got a belt to represent oh. 50. I'm just going <laughs> to... So oh. Where's your left shoulder? Yeah, it's great. It's getting weighed down a little bit. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, 50 episodes in. Firstly, how are you? I am well. I'm very, very tired today. But again, I didn't, not hung over anything like that for a few weeks in a row now. I'm rolling. I'm absolutely flying. I think it's just, it's the fact that I work Saturdays, most Saturdays now. So I don't really, either I don't get the time or by the time I finish work like yesterday, I'm too tired to do anything. (laughs) I'm like, nah, it's not going. It's not happening. (laughs) So I'm good, uh, but I'm tired and I'm sore because football. uh, And yeah, that's it. Yeah. I mean, I forgot about that. We can actually talk about that. Maybe that'll hold up majority of the episode. Just a little cliff note for everyone watching at home and listening on their cars and wherever else you're consuming our fantastic content. Um, we have no idea what we're doing this episode. We literally wrote down on dot points before mm-hmm. we recorded because that's how well we're going this week. We thought well, the best way to celebrate 50 episodes was to not plan for it. To not do anything at all and wing it. Because I feel like, personally, I think our best content and the things that are always the funniest just come when we're just, like, out of our minds. And it's just, like, let's just go. And it's just happening. And things are just happening. Uh, so we thought best way to celebrate the 50 is to not celebrate. <laughs> and to just fucking full steam ahead and figure it out. Except the fact that we're not probably full steam ahead when we're just trying to figure it out. We're just chugging along. <laughs> yeah, we're just entering station number 50. Good <laughs> <laughs> you, <Choo-choo>, motherfuckers. <laughs> anyway, um, how'd you go on footy this weekend? Uh, good. We had a win, for, which was just unreal in the in the thirds team, uh, which doesn't happen very often. <laughs> so <laughs> that was nice. Had a win. Uh, played pretty well. Very sore. Did you? I had, a, I had a very delayed soreness, though. Okay. Mm. I, the day, like that night and the morning after, I was like, oh, I feel pretty good. And then last night, after I then sat at work, like sat at my desk for eight hours working, I got up and I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I was like, I'm done. And now my back 
it's just gone like it's absolutely fucked. Um, but yeah, we're rolling. How did you go on the weekend? Yeah, not bad. You know, <laughs> lazy. <laughs> just had a second best on performance. Team won by seventy points and snagged four. So. Lazy. Yeah, I mean, four goals too, which is pretty accurate for my standards. Interesting stat is that we kicked 23 goals eight as a team, which was very, very nice. Yes. And <laughs> that means I kicked 25% of the points. Ah. Yeah. How's that for a slap of points for you? <laughs> you win that. <laughs> yeah, four goals too. Had about probably 12 lead up marks. Couldn't keep up with me. I was like prime Nick Rewalt. Like, just... <laughs> just leading out. Constant double. Four goals, too, probably represents what Nick would do as well. Yeah. Just, oh, clunk it. My thumbs are sore. And the <laughs> insides of my hands have, <laughs> like, the fine print of the Sharon just imprinted on it. <laughs> One of those days. <laughs> yeah, and, I, you know, it was... Uh, didn't have the ideal preparation, you know. It's a it's a tough sleep and everything, you know. And just getting there, the ground's pretty shit, shit travel, not a lot of parking. So it wasn't a great build up to you know be there and I don't know, long sleeves on and switched on and said I'm taking over. <laughs> Game time. Couldn't keep up with me, man. I see. I had like the opposite preparation. I went in full of fucking confidence. I was like, I feel good. I was like, I haven't felt like good going into a game in a really long time. But Friday night on the drive, I was like, I feel good. I was like, I think, I think I feel pretty good today. Had like the whole day to rest, like fed well, ate well, and I was like, I'm gonna go in. And you had similar results. I like my first half in particular. Second half, I kind of was like. I'm happy to take the foot off the gas a little bit. But first half, I was like, fuck. <laughs> it's going to run, Eddie. <laughs> yeah, I got um, read some multiple match reports, and it was just very confronting. I can't believe they didn't put a tag on you. Is that <laughs> as well? Like, is that the high? Did you match the same amount of possessions as the number you wore on the back of your Guernsey? <laughs> <laughs> so I was uh, I was number forty seven on, on Friday night, which was a, a far cry from the number three that I wore the week before. Um, hey, quick numerology <laughs> for you, by the way: forty seven plus three equals fifty. <laughs> Look at that! We're on the anyway, on continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. Well, I was saw the 47 at the start. Uh, my theory is just like, I don't really care what the number is on the back as long as it fits me. And I don't want it to be too baggy. And I, it was like the smallest one they had. And I was like, all right, that's going to have to do. <laughs> so 47 it was. Was it um, very, you now players choose to wear smaller Guernsey. So it just exuberance is everything else. Yeah. Was it, was it very. Um, Not that tight. Was it pleasing? <laughs> not that tight like, did you walk into the like toilets me. at half time and oh. <laughs> shoulders out chest out stitches pushed out I know you've been going to the gym lately push up <laughs> challenge has been happening it has been happening I was feeling maybe nice that's and... why we played so well <laughs> that's actually a good point the push ups are probably doing enough for us but no uh, it wasn't that small the number three that I wore the week before that was that was tight uh, and that was also me coming back from Vegas where I definitely wasn't in my best shape. <laughs> so I was, was not feeling incredible. <laughs> so it probably wasn't the same size, to be honest. Interesting. <laughs> Anywho, enough you about mean? you and your unreal performances. Because we could talk <laughs> about them all day, couldn't we? <laughs> anyway... Um, <laughs> round round fourteen's done, and we're here done. to talk footy. It's fantastic. How good is it? Footy great for about five minutes on Friday night when I got home. I thought footy was fantastic. <laughs> when St Kilda kicked like four in a row in the last quarter, I was like, "Footy's pretty fucking good." And then it just kept going back out again, and I went, "All right, no, it's back. It's it's back to shit." And then Port played today. And footy is extra shit. Solo. The L in solo stands for losers. That's us. 
Yeah, not so much you because you've been losers all year. We're dead set just drop kicks now. <laughs> that makes us more losers. No. Uh, yeah, like I didn't get to watch much of Port today. What I did see was the good. goal, which <laughs> what I did see was the goal kicking, which both sides wasn't didn't look good. Um, but clearly they needed an Anthony Luciani out there to teach him how to fucking put him through the big ones. Um, Fuck so I didn't get, to... <laughs> get to watch much of it, but I I watched obviously the early again today. Um, but I think, yeah, look, uh, to be fair, right, GWS in Sydney isn't the easiest task in football. So like there's a bit of a bit of leeway there, I feel. No. <laughs> that's set. No. No. No, 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 no. They're in terrible form. Well, not terrible, but you know, they're not as look I, I whatever. I don't care. <laughs> don't want to go too much. That's fair. Look. Look. <laughs> not a great not a great result, admittedly. Absolutely. Um, but you've had your buy now. Saints now have to go into a buy <laughs> at the lowest point and then be like, oh, by the way, he's a buy for you. Yeah, fine. And it's like, fuck. <laughs> then you play us afterwards. Oh, boy. Can't wait to look forward to the live capitulation of Port Adelaide in that game. <laughs> if, like, you wouldn't want to lose to Port us. Win. If Port you, lose. You wouldn't want to lose to us. If we lose and Ken is still coached the week after that, Did you know we haven't played at uh, that Giant Stadium or NG Stadium, or NGIS, whatever the fuck it's called now? Yeah, I haven't played there in eleven years. I was going to say I do not remember the last time you would have played there, and eleven years is what their debut year, almost, or the year after their debut year. Yeah, a couple of years after. Yeah, that's fucking bizarre. Firstly, I didn't know it was this the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you see that banner? No, I didn't see the banner. Very funny because I thought they said, um, what was it about? It was 11 years of media scrutiny, something, something. You are Knuff. You know, like the Barbie reference. Thought, yep. cute, right? Very funny. Well done. Great low key effort. Fantastic. Except for the fact the poor friends are looking at it going, just grabbing the neck, <laughs> just <laughs> hoping that something, a bit of pressure just un. Oh, sorry, that's just me getting angry. Um, I was going to say, you, like, just, you just filmed your review, so I think the the extra energy is really, really alive right now. I said to you pre, pre-recording that I wanted to keep the energy, you know, positive. We need it. I think we need it. I think being happy and energetic is the way to go. Do so you know as well, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We wanted to have a short... This is actually the review for Port GWS. <laughs> Hope you Didn't like have it. a chance to record it. Um, just quickly, Dan Houston. Everyone's talking about all these halfback flankers that should be on, like Sam Flanders, well deserved recognition. I think some people haven't even put Dan Houston in the conversation for all Australian halfback again. You've got to realise yeah. he was all Australian last year. Again today, he comes in and goes, All right, I'm going to have 31. Was unbelievable. Had tw- I think twenty five of those were kicks. Like, yeah. Blake's a gun, man. I I'll admit, like I I wasn't not that I was underrating him, but I wasn't giving him much respect this year just because like I haven't like seen as much for him kind of thing. Also, I also missed the whole like first half of the season watching wise, so I didn't get to see a whole lot. But then today, when I saw that one hundred and seventy four hit my super coach from Dan Houston, <laughs> like, oh, hello <laughs> <L-O-U>. you, <laughs> you're pretty good at football, aren't you? <laughs> Yeah, I forgot how good you are hitting a target. <laughs> it's like, oh boy, 174 swimming coach. Thank you. It's very funny because normally it's Houston or Farrell taking the kick-ins, which is good. They're both in my fantasy team. So I'm like, killer. So whenever a team misses, I'm like, oh boy. Maybe and today, GWS see. doing it. Thank you to a T. <laughs> but then at one stage today, Dylan Williams decided to take the kick-ins. I don't think he hit one. Never again. <laughs> so anyway, sending a message to those that decide who do the kick-ins at Port. One, don't let Williams leave make it, it in. Experts. <laughs> Two, yeah, leave it to the experts. Simple as that. Um, <laughs> but no, other than that, it was a, it was a round that was interesting. Um, yeah. We don't really talk about the rounds as much, but there's a couple of things we did have of note that we'd like to 
mention. I this is this is a bizarre round of football, right? Like this is one of the yeah. this is one of the weirder rounds of football I, I think I've seen in a long time. I think last week I said that this is where the boring part of the season comes in. And then they completely proved me wrong by throwing everything out the window and said, let's just have some fun. Like, let's just figure it out. Like, Lions, Saints, right? Lions get out to a massive start. Saints come back twice in, like, the last half to, like, get within mm-hmm. a goal, basically. Dogs, Frio. Frio, who last game they won by nearly 100, got absolutely pantsed by the Dogs. <laughs> like, like yeah. pants. Hawks demolished the Tigers. That was going to gonna happen anyway. But, like, the Dusty, obviously, the, the first goal and everything like that. Joel Amati yeah. then kicks nine, <laughs> and Collingwood come back by from fifty four points down, and then the Giants and Port don't know how to kick footballs. It was a bizarre round. Why does our game have to be the one that's the most boring? <laughs> oh yeah that's, yeah, that's the thing about the Saints and Lions game. The Saints kicked over hundred points. That's the fucking bizarre thing. There's a lot of bizarre things going around. Um, I don't know which one to start with. I think no. we uh, I think we go with the uh, Amadi one. Yeah, look. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Let's paint a picture, right? I'm sitting in a Mexican restaurant eating my dinner, right? <laughs> I look up, I look up, and like the TV is one of those ones that you see in like like the normal chicken shops where like it's got the TV and it's got the subtitles down the bottom, like they do. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? And I'm sitting there, and then I see Amadi has five, and I'm like, excuse me, I'm like. That's like five. Look at my fucking phone quickly. I'm like, there's no way that says five. In the time that I've looked down, I looked up and he's kicked his sixth. And I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, I'm like, what just happened? Like, everything just happened so fast. And then they fucking took him off. <laughs> We're two minutes to go. What the fuck? You are six goals up. Park him one Let out. Happen. Let it happen. Just Pull everybody out. Most Let me obscure... Me 10 goal performances ever. It's still the most obscure fucking yeah. thing I've seen. Yeah. But it just it begs the question, Mr. Jared Thomas. And this is I'm going to do this on the fly for you. Yeah. He won't ever do that again. All right? It's no, as simple as no. that. That is not happening. He has that. more chance of being delisted inside three years than he does kicking He'll nine again. Maybe, maybe five again. He'll probably fit yeah. five will probably be max. Yeah. But it just reminds me of a few obscure performances. And I want to see if we can go one for one here of okay. obscure big bag of goal performances. Okay. It starts us off with simply Ben Ronk, seven goals. Yeah, okay. Yep. You know, that's how the hell does that happen? He's not even in the system anymore. Like it's just again. Yeah, another obscure. Song. Yeah. That's always a good one. Um yeah. My next one, I'm, I'm going to leave one for you that I know that you're going to use next, so I'll leave that one. My one that I'm thinking of is Josh Bruce Wright, well past his prime, playing for the Dogs, and he kicks 12 on North Melbourne. <laughs> Just, it was like a Friday night. It was like the Good Friday game or whatever, and I remember yeah. I, was working, I was working at McDonald's at the time, and I walked up, and I'm like, is that fucking 12? <laughs> like, I kicked 12 out of nowhere, and I was like, okay. Thanks, Josh. It's, it's very funny. Like, I just... <laughs> Some of these performances, you know, oh, it's not a big bag of goals, but it's certainly very funny. It's yep. Jason Tut, four goals oh. <laughs> against Port. Yep. And I'll mention a similar performance in a sec, but four goals with like four touches. Unreal. <laughs> like, and where did he go next? Nowhere. No, absolutely nowhere. I'm now thinking, well, this one's like not a nowhere because it was very recently as well. But last year when... The Bombers weren't good, mind you. But all of a sudden, Jesse Hogan decides, I'm going to fucking kill you guys. <laughs> Kick nine in like a 100 points smacking on a Saturday 435, like that game. And Giants just like pasted them. And I was like, holy shit, Jesse Hogan. <laughs> never before saying he'll never will do it again. He'll kick five no. and sixes, but he won't do it again. He won't do and... nine. Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. And, you know, the one I'll throw out there that's probably the most famous in my little circle is John Butcher's six kick and that's six goals. Gonna, that's what I was leaving for you. Tabled yeah. the future. Very quickly became the past, but it was very, very funny. <laughs> and he did it against the dogs, the same game that Jason Tuck kicked four. They were going pound for pound. Yeah, there was a lot of hope there. A lot of them don't think were drop punts. No. No, that's... Helicopter, helicopter. <laughs> I, um... I think of one, it was like 
2016, maybe. <laughs> 2016, maybe. Uh, the Saints weren't very good. All the critics were telling Nick Reot to just retire, right? So instead, oh. what he does, instead what he does is he plays against Brisbane, takes I think the record amount of marks in a game, and kicks like seven and had like twenty five touches. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> he was like getting all these calls, like just retire, man. Like you don't need to keep playing. Like they're gonna go down. You don't need to play. And he's like, fuck you guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dominate. I love that. I love a good <laughs> stick it up your ass performance. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. So, a fair few. We've gone around. Yeah, I'm so sure there's another one. Yeah. Another one I'm thinking of is Josh Kennedy's last game where he kicked seven because they were literally just dark targeting him. West Coast sucked. Josh Kennedy was like, I'm getting all of these. <laughs> Every entry is coming to me. And he kicked like seven. <laughs> it's like Mark Lacrosse 13 or whatever he kicked. Yeah, yeah the, the 12 against Essen or whatever it was, under the roof yeah. of Marvel. <laughs> just bizarre. Some bizarre bags every time. Really good stuff, though. I love when that happens. And my favorite genre of footy moment is un- like unlikely players kicking fucking seven or up. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's just, you know, just wild. My favorite. So He'll good. never do it again, Amadi. It's just... I think what makes it better is it's 10 disposals, nine goals. Like, that's so funny to me. Nine, like, one. Yeah, nine, one. Like, every single disposal he had was a score and that's so funny to me like that is hilarious <laughs> did he have he didn't uh, that's yeah 10 kicks yeah. no handballs no handball the fact that he didn't pass to a teammate once he every time he took the ball he, he was a true key forward which i appreciate i appreciate the fact that he said i'm doing this for all the key forwards out there and i'm kicking snacks <laughs> i'm not passing no, no wonder they took him off oh he was probably selfish, they were probably filth- <laughs> selfish <laughs> like, footballer <laughs> give me the fucking ball so funny Gee, he'd be ruining the fucking one he missed today. Nine goals, one. Could have had no, ten. What was on he missed? Oh, no, it was just like a... Well, the I remember. Very funny thing is it's against the Crows. Oh, yeah. So, this is like a thought I had. The Swans and Crows are making a really obscure rivalry in the last, <laughs> the last year. They've made a really obscure thing because, like, obviously the, the post thing... Not Sydney's fault, but just, like, the whole post thing was against Sydney. And then the fact that now Amari's gone to kick nine on them in their house. <laughs> it's just, it's so funny. Against Mark Keane. Poor Mark Keane. He was having an okay season, I think. <laughs> I think he was okay up till now. Any sort of credentials now are gone. <laughs> You're not getting anywhere. Also, Mitch Hinge might be the dumbest footballer I've ever seen in my entire life. When Amadi kicks his fucking seventh or whatever, and he just decides, I'm going to run through Taylor Adams. <laughs> it's like, why would you do that? Like, what possesses you to do that? Very funny, though. Like, you're going up to someone and just been like, uh. Yeah, he runs up. I don't even know if he was doing it to Mitch Hinge. I think he was going up to Amadi being like, oh, that's your seventh man. And then Hinge just comes across, just fucking floors him. I've just come up with one of the greatest things ever while you were talking then. Do you know what oh, the writing was? <laughs> you know what the same energy is as this? It's Monica Seven. <laughs> I'm so getting the Adam screenshot. I was going to say that's a tweet. <laughs> oh, far out. That's good funny shit. Seven. 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 <laughs> Mitch Hinge had the wrong sort of reaction. <laughs> Bit cringe from Hinge, eh? Do you reckon he's oh. on the fringe? The triple. <laughs> you won't see that on binge. <laughs> oh, the, the quad. Okay. <laughs> Trying to get 50. <laughs> I don't think you're going to find 50 words. It's a rhyme with Hinge. No, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find 50 puns for the episode. <laughs> Good God. No, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> do apologise for that. It was a bit over the top. <laughs> That's okay. still, it's only been oh. two hours since Port Loss, so I'm just... Still feeling it. That's fair. Um, <laughs> yeah, I apologise. Well, that's fun. Um, that happened. Um, and then North happened today, which is... 
Sorry, hey, Chuck. <laughs> I beat you. I knew it was coming. <laughs> you can't fucking fool me. I had that shit unlock. <laughs> Generally choking. <laughs> you have no concern for my health. <laughs> But yes. <laughs> anyway, continue. I'll just recover by myself, you know. Sorry, do apologize. God's sake. Just yeah, I'd have to do everything by myself around here. I should shut up. <laughs> but that... Anyway, North choked a fifty four point lead, which is absolutely fucking hilarious. Yeah. Um I know that um yeah, I was cheering him on so hard. Like they they were really good. Like it was some of the best football we've seen oh, from yeah. anyone. In the first half, unfortunately, couldn't hold in the south. I think they ran out of um, ran out of steam. But there was two things that were baffling for me, and I tweeted about this on my personal. The two howling decisions at the end of the game that cost North Melbourne. Oh yeah, There's some real one was about. the 50, 50 meter penalty that should have been paid yep. with fifty seconds to go. There is a mob of magpies. Literally swooping, <laughs> swooping on. <laughs> oh, I can't remember the North player, but should have got a fifty meter penalty. The other one was Alistair Clarkson taking off Will Phillips. Yeah, yeah. So what are you doing? I, I watching. So like, I didn't get to watch properly the first half. I basically watched the entire last quarter, which was hilarious. Uh, but I didn't get to watch much of the game. But I remember seeing like. Will Fuller's been subbed. And at the time, like, you just look at it like just as that. And you're like, oh, yeah, like that's a fair enough substitution. But when you realize he's playing on Dacos, you're like, oh, fuck, like, why would you do that kind of thing? And Dacos changes the game in the last quarter. And then that that 50, there's a few bad decisions. There should have been a hole in the ball on Dacos as well because he completely dropped it. And then uh, not even just the free, the free, the 50 was, that is fucking ridiculous, by the way. That 50, two people went over the mark. Not even just one, two people do it. And they still yeah, were no. like, didn't call it. My also thing is that North shot themselves in the foot in that last passage. Zerhar is streaming down the middle of the ground. All he had to do was kick it forward, and he decides to go with his handball and misses it. And I'm like, you, like, oh, my God. And then not long after, I think it's after the 50 even, ball gets kicked back out. Luke McDonald is by himself, and he just drops it. Like, the handball comes to him, and he just drops it. And I'm like, oh, man, like... You were the captain of that club. Like, what the fuck? Like, it was like they were deliberately trying to lose it. And I was like, man. And then when Fisher kicked it, I thought it was in. I was like, it's home. I was like, it's home. They're going to fucking do it. And it missed. And I was like, wow. <laughs> it was so very rough. bizarre. It was a bizarre finish. Mm -hmm. I just... It kind of sucks because it's against Collingwood. I think everyone else in the AFL were like, oh, like... Would just we been, wanted to win. Would have been special. Like, it was almost a Carlin copy of the week before where the, the Eagles fought all their way back, got in front, and then North kicked one to go back in. It's like North have to go behind to be like, oh, we'll be back. <laughs> like, it's like they had to do it because then they keep the goal and put themselves back in front, and then it just, yeah, it all just fucking turned from there. Very, very glad that teams, you, know, you look at St Kilda who kicked over 100 points for the first time this year. Or Melbourne have done the same thing. Like it's, I'm glad. I think the bottom half, of the ladder, have started to be like, you know what, stuff it, and just throw everything at it. You look <laughs> yeah. at Hawthorne; it's working for Hawthorne to an absolute yeah. T. Now they're in, you know, good showing. I'm, um, you know, West Coast have had glimpses. Richmond, yeah, besides on the weekend, glimpses. North, if they do it, like, you know, the the bizarre thing is, if North win another game and Richmond don't, Richmond are on the bottom of the ladder. And North, I feel like, have been significantly worse than Richmond this year. This was like last year, though, where, like, Eagles seemed to be far and away the worst team in the comp. But then, like, towards the end of the year, it was like a toss-up between, like, who was going to finish on the bottom. And it's like, the Eagles were clearly the worst team. <laughs> like, yeah. They have to be the bottom. I just really hope West Coast, Richmond, and North win, like, another four games and the Crows don't win anything. Stink. <laughs> Imagine them getting a spoon. And still giving Knicks a two-year contract extension. I was going to say, didn't they win the spoon like not long after the premiership? Or well, that no, it wasn't that year. It was like two years after whatever it was. 
I forget that Adelaide were like really bad, like recently. <laughs> like they not that long been ago. bad for eight years. That's what I'm saying. I I just forget that they were like actually like, really bad. Like not like that. Like last year they were like competing for finals, but I forget they were like dreadful for a really long time. It's like how I forget that Brisbane used to suck. Like Brisbane mm-hmm. used to be so bad, and now they're like because in the last how many years, five years, they've been consistently like prelims and stuff like that. And I'm like, damn, I forget that Brisbane were like. Brisbane and Melbourne were the two really bad teams growing up. Like, when, growing up, you didn't want to be a Brisbane or a Melbourne fan because they sucked. And it was like, that's rough. Carlton growing there yeah, as well. Carlton for a couple of years. And then obviously the expansion teams. Um, but like, I remember Brisbane and Melbourne were the two where it's like, don't go there. They are really bad. And now it's like, for the last however many years, it's like they are, you know, Premier. Yeah. But hey, I don't know what to do next, to be honest. No, that's fair. The only other thing I had here is the Bont is really good at football. Um, don't know what his stats say. I didn't really look at them, but just just on the eye test, and I love the eye test. My favorite thing in the world. Yeah. Just on the eye test. The Bont was fucking tearing shreds off Freeman on Saturday. That guy's so good at football. It's not even funny. Like he was kicking goals for fun, and I'm like, how are you? How do you? And also, they just decided not to put anyone on him. You'd think after his third goal and 25 touches, you'd think like, hey, maybe we should put a guy. On. <laughs> like, Please. You know, it's funny about Frio playing the dogs. They've played them seven times or whatever recently. I think the Dockers haven't won once in that few times. And I saw this, you know how you're scrolling Facebook and stuff, they'll put like recommended or whatever suggestion posts. Saw one from a Frio page. And I think I think the Bonts got three votes every single time in the last however many years. They showed the graphic against Freo. Yeah, yeah, it was like the last eight games. Five of them were three votes. Two of them were like a one or a two vote. And then there was one game where he didn't get any votes. And it was like, oh. <laughs> but like all the other ones are three votes. And I'm like, how do you let one dude just continually fucking paste you every single time? And then like the coach comes out and says, I just didn't know how to handle him. Don't be the coach then. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> like, didn't know how, to, how do you deal with him? I know. You have 23 players. One of them can go on there. Or watch fucking any sort of, watch any highlight reel and be like, okay, he's pretty good on this side of his body. He's pretty strong. Let's get a guy on him at the contest. Not just let him fucking walk around like nobody's business. We're not that smart. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> but I'm like, fuck, man. Like, oh, he's very good, though. I, do, I love the one. I got no pun for that. But yes, I agree. <laughs> very I think... good like it's just I, I struggle to sit here and think and it's hard very hard when you have a dog's outfit like it is since like they won the grand final in 2016 it's very hard to sit he's the greatest dog to play the game think, most yeah, likely yeah, he's think... in that conversation at the very minimum probably right up there he's at least second if not first <laughs> yeah. yeah and now we sit here and like he would be in the conversation for one of the best to play the game since 2010. Where does he sit in terms of one of the greats of all time? That's the thing that, like, that's what really annoys me about the fact that he hasn't got his brown learn. And I, it should have been last year, I think. It's the fact that, like, he goes from, if he doesn't win a brown and they don't win another flag, whatever, he, he'll end his career as the greatest bulldog of all time. And that'll be it, right? But no one will ever be like he's the greatest player of all time, kind of thing. Like he'll never get that that level. And I always think like, but just off like eye test, like people that I've watched with my eyes and how good they are at football, like Gary Ablett Jr. Watching with my eyes, one of the greatest I've ever seen. Dustin Martin watching with my eyes, one of the greatest I've ever seen. Bont is right up there. Every time I watch him play, I'm like, you're so fucking good. <laughs> like, why are you so good? And I know that when he retires, I'm gonna be like one of the outspoken ones being like, he needs to be in the, the GOAT combo. Like, he's so good. <laughs> like, why is he not getting attention? So I could sit here and list my five, but I won't because I think we can save that. But so, yeah, I think there was one glaring player that you left out there, and that was Buddy. Um, That's fair, yeah. I think he's in the top five. If he can... Oh, he's, oh, he's definitely in the top ten. Um, but it's very hard to compare the modern era versus back. And, you know, we all grow up. We all, Everyone has an opinion these days and everyone has a podcast these days. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> but, like, 
you sit here and you go, everyone has a personal opinion. You say eye tests, everyone's eyes are different. And that's where I sit here and go, if you're going to statistically put him in that conversation, he's lost, unfortunately. Hmm. But as pure spectacle, and this is what I think the greatest part of our game is, the spectacle is better than the stat sheet. Yep. You know, if you sit here and go, all right, I remember the time when Bont did this against Frio Saturday afternoon, you go, fuck yeah, one of the greatest things I've seen. You're not going to sit there and go, yeah, I remember the time in 2022 when he got his All-Australian. That's not no. memorable. That's part of his run it's sheet. It's the moments. That's why Dusty is... You look at him stats-wise, like, he has a lot of accolades, absolutely. He's one of Brownlow. But then you look at, like, his actual stats and you're like, oh, like, you know... Was he like the likes of Gary Lewis Jr. and stuff like that? When you put how much shit he did, like spectacle wise, he immediately goes to the top because it's like, and it's not even just the spectacle; it's the the surroundings of the way that they do things. Dusty is so good and considered one of the best ever because when he was at his best was when he needed to be at his best. Grand finals, prelim finals, fucking like every time there was a big game, Dusty was was him. He was the guy, and I think that's what makes it so incredible. And, like, what is putting, like, Nick Dacos, why everyone is giving him so many, like, raps right now and giving him all this stuff is because every time they need him to be good, he is good. Anzac Day, he's always good. Good in, like, unreal in the grand final. Like, every time he needs to play well, he plays well. And that's what, like, you need to put that into consideration with everything as well in that your best players of all time need to be their best when they are desperately needed to be. And if they aren't, like, if they go missing... It takes a massive, like, a massive hammer to everything. One word to describe everything you just said is simply impact. Yep. Impact is the most important thing in our game, and if you can do that and have a positive one on and off the field, I think um, that's what makes you stand out from the rest. And that's why Dusty stands out from the rest in his 300 games, Jared. At his 300th game, which was very very good segue. Unfortunately, he wasn't very good in his search of cat. I'm willing to give him a pass because it's Dustin Martin. So, kicking the first goal of the game is just written for the scripts. I loved it. Beautiful script. The right? 92,000 people that turned up to watch this game, which was just. I spoke, to, I spoke to someone before, one of my mates, and I said, because he's a Richmond fan, and he's like, I was like, oh, well, you probably get 70, 75. There, you know, that's a good crowd for Richmond Hawthorne too. Unfortunately, bottom ten sides, but Dusty surrounded. And then his hearing on the radio on the way home footy, ninety two thousand just thrown out there. It's like be right. I remember, like, there was rumblings like, oh, we could get eighty. And I was like, fuck, eighty's a lot of people. I was like, I don't know if you're gonna get eighty. And then eighty six thousand for the start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just eighty people. Just eighty people rolling around the outside. Eighty six people there <laughs> at the very start. And they ended up being 92,000. That is fucked. That is, I think, you can't really measure this because you don't... I mean, you kind of could, I suppose, but not really. That would be the biggest jump in crowd attendance ever based off just one person. Because that game, you take out the dusty 300th thing, that game gets 45,000 people there. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I thought a lot of people were there for just 50th. <laughs> I actually did forget about that. Great stuff. Great stuff, CJ. Bumps really it good. back to 60. <laughs> all right. So, all right. We'll go up to 55, then. That's fine. But then, even still, you then add another 30 fucking thousand people purely for one dude. Like, that has to be the biggest just jump for a specific person ever. How many people do you reckon were there in the attendance that weren't Richmond fans, but were there for the moment of Dusty's 300? And this is why I talk about impact. That's what the MCC was so big, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah, this is why I talk about impact because I mean, we talk about impact, I should say, because it's like I saw so many people in stories and posts and stuff. Oh, I'm at Dusty's 300th. It's like a moment in time where you're like, I was there when Dusty it's played his like, 300th game. It's like an Anzac Day game where the MCC is full of people that aren't really either calling the rest. Like, there's obviously a few, but like, there is still half, maybe a bit less than half, that are just neutral fans that will want to be at an Anzac Day game. This went as they are just neutral friends that want to be a Dusty 300th. Like, I know the MCC was full of all these people, and I was like, that's astonishing. That there's just people that just want to be there for this. Like, that proves how good he is as a whole. You had a favourite Dusty moment from over the time? Whoa, my favourite Dusty moment ever. I, <laughs> I, love, I love his yellow and black 
yells when he gets up on the stage for his for his premierships. They're always good because he's so quiet. He's always a quiet man. And he gets up on the stage and says, yeah. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. But like playing wise, um, my favorite moment ever. Last minute of the 2020 grand final. Game is over. Dusty already has the Norm Smith. But what he decides to do is take the fucking piss. He robs Reese Stanley, shrugs off Patrick Tangerfield, and just snaps this fucking unreal goal. And it's weird because it's at the Gabba. So the crowd like kind of goes up, but kind of doesn't. And it's just like that. When I watched it, I was like, fuck, he's like the greatest player I've seen in my life. <laughs> he's so good. Yeah, that was going to be mine. I think <laughs> it's just the obscurity <laughs> of the, the performance. But it's not just that. It's the, the build-up as well. Like, they were down and out pretty much near halftime. He kicks one late in the second quarter to bring him back within a respectable, mar- respectable margin. It's in the wet, and he's just a class above in the wet. And then two goals in the third quarter, I think it was. And it just, uh, it's just sensational. Like, every time, we talk about his fend- fend-offs and everything, but he's eyesight for goal and his oh, awareness yeah. Oh, Man. it's just his ability to kick inside one fifty, knowing what's happening, is like, oh man, like, <laughs> oh, he's so good. I think another, it's not even a moment, just a thing that he's done is when he left his car under the MCG for like three months after his grand final. That might be the most iconic thing ever. Like, that is hilarious and the most respectable thing you could possibly do. And they're like, hey, we'll pick it up in a week. And then I'm pretty sure he was spotted in, like, Ibiza, like, <laughs> like two weeks yeah. off. Car still under the G. And I'm like, that's so fucking funny. <laughs> I love, like, I love when he first he started to become this star. And, like, if he, I think it was his first interview. He's like, I don't really give a shit for, a me- for the media. And I was like, yes, so that's good. what we want. So good. <laughs> I was That's surprised he even did a, a post game interview. Like he did it with Jack Regal, which admittedly he probably only did it because it was Jack. Like Jack yeah. definitely ran out there and said, "Mate, you're fucking doing this with me." <laughs> like that's the only reason he would have done it. But like in his, I don't know if you've seen his post game interview, but every time yeah. Jack asks him anything, he just says the same response every time because <laughs> you know he hates the media and he's got one thing in his brain. It's just yeah, just love the support and just really overwhelmed. So thanks, guys. <laughs> no matter what Jack asked him, that was his response. <laughs> I did like though his response was so humbling because it was like yeah. it was a bit of emotion in it too. Yeah, and this is where like the retirement talk started to come out because it was like, yeah, I love the club, I love everything, and everyone's just like, wow, they're treating this like it's his farewell. That was the it's issue like, that I was getting. I was like, what? Like, if it's this good for his three hundred, what's his retirement game going to look like? <laughs> like, fuck. might need another ground. <laughs> like, holy shit, dude! There's gonna be like hundred and forty thousand people at this game. You'd want to play someone with a logo like GWS. Who do the Who do the Tigers play in their last game this year? Because I think he, I don't think he goes past this year. Let me have a look. Tigers, uh, no, Tigers versus the Suns at the, the MCG. Year. Oh my god! No, it's the trade. That'll do it. That will Straight do to it. dimmer. <laughs> that actually works so well. That's actually a genius. Oh, we figured it out for him, Dusty. I know you're watching. Um, we've figured out. <laughs> we've figured out where your retirement game is going to be. It's against the Suns in the last game of the year. It's perfect because Dimmer's going to be there too. So, stuff, mate. You know what they should do for that as well. Mm. Just so it has its own slot. Yes. Just give it a Friday night. Yeah. Put it on the Friday night. Let it happen, or like give it the you know. Give it like the Sunday three twenty. Like I know it's not like its own slot, but like give it, give it something. Like give it its own sort of, you know. Oh, if you're gonna do Sunday, give it the four ten. So everyone that's hung over and coming home and shit is just there. We're all Make watching it. Dusty. Just like imagine us coming on to record after that. Love of life. God, I'd come on here and just be like, can't deal with you anymore, JT. Fucking fend off. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. He's so good. Yeah. One of my <laughs> yeah. favorites. <laughs> yeah. Broken yeah. my heart a lot of times, but he's one of my favorites. That's the thing. Every time we played him, he'd paste us, but like, God, he's good at football, isn't he? 2020 prelim. I was just like, oh. And then watching it the week after, I was like, oh, yeah, you're not bad. I remember the last, <laughs> the last game of 2017. Um, the obviously their premiership year 
we'd be, we'd beat him earlier in the year in Maddie's match. We beat him by like seventy, and then I remember like the last game of the year we played him at the G. They were up by like six goals. They were they were fine. Dusty had himself one of his games, and I remember he was running off at the end of the year, and everyone knew by this point that he was winning the Brownlow. Like it was like the most fucking foregone conclusion. They were like, he's the he's the Brownlow medalist. That's him. And I remember him running off the ground, and I'm sitting in the fucking nosebleeds at the G, <laughs> and the noise that the, the Tigers fans made when he ran off the ground because they knew that he was the Brownlow medalist. Like they were just like. And like the dusty chant going around the G, and I'm just sitting there, a very cold St Kilda fan, down six goals, and I'm just like, <laughs> "Good work, man!" Like, <laughs> uh, uh, it's very funny. Um, obviously, iconic number four is is Dusty. Yes. So I figured what we could do is a number association with just the number four. Yes, and I think it'll it'll work out nicely. Yes, I like that. Just a few. Whatever you got there. Well, I mean, like, we were talking about it before, but, and we also mentioned this before the podcast, but Bontepelli, um, I think when he's done, he'll him and Dusty will be probably fighting it out for arguably the best number fours of all time. Um, oh, I'd give it to Dusty. Well, that's what I'm saying, but I'm saying by the time Bont's done, see what he, see what the rest of him does. But Are we are we pushing this into a... Another player v player type scenario. Player v player. It's Bont versus Dusty. Yeah, because you know what? Daniel Pierce was better than Justin Kaczynski. <laughs> but not much when I saw it. It was like 56. Hang on. 58 to 42. Not bad. Pretty close. <laughs> Me and my Daniel Pierce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, I like that. I think. We could do a, a poll, peak Dustin Martin versus peak Mike Spondapelli. Isn't there a peak that used to play for St. Kilda? Brett. Mm. <laughs> and Frio as well. First Brett peak, he's going to be he's gonna be one of the options as well. <laughs> yeah, Dusty v. Bond versus Brett peak. <laughs> but yes, Spondapelli's a favorite. They're all in their peaks. <laughs> <laughs> What about you? Um, uh, Gavin Wanganin. Yeah. Port Adelaide, Gavin Wanganin. Yeah, I that's think. Right. I'm not going to really. You know, there's not too much explanation for it. Just was a famous number four mm-hmm. Premiership player, captain for Port. Famous goal in that 04 prelim. Four. Numerology. Um... <laughs> <laughs> What's the uh, square root of four, Jared? Who? Mm, what's two plus two? I had something there, but it wasn't really going. <laughs> and I got the weird look at it. Shut up. What's your next one? <laughs> um, I say Joe Watson, I think. Uh, when I like figure number four, like that's just an iconic number four, just because like very good football, obviously. Obviously, a bit a going in terms of his legacy, but Joe Watson definitely for me. Andrew Mackey. Andrew Mackey wasn't important. Andrew Mackey gave me fucking nightmares. Him, Corey Enright, and Matthew Scarlett gave me nightmares for about five years. Um, but also, Andrew Mackey did get uh, knocked out when Michael Gardner fucking took him out in round 13, 2009. So, <laughs> around 14, 2009. <laughs> that was a good one for you, was it? <laughs> yeah, that was a good game. Shame it didn't go well for yet. But yeah, Andrew Mackey is one that hurts me because it's like, he, like, I know he was so good, but. He, like, he hurt my soul as a single fan for so many years that it's just, like, kills me. Oh, you poor baby. <laughs> my only other one I can think of, because it's, like, arguably the most famous number four in our women's St. Kilda's history is Tony Lockett, obviously. Um, oh, yeah. It's just... It's just it, like Tony Lockett. Like you, you can see it already. Him streaming out of the fifty, yeah, you know, the biggest dude on the field. <laughs> like, yeah, kicked no, over a thousand good. goals. Kicked over a thousand goals. Number four. It's a classic. I want to speak about famous number fours as forwards? Odd Marshall. Mm-hmm. Oh, what a man! Hola, for Marshall. Now, nah, Toby Green's in the conversation. Oh, yeah. I forget that Toby Green is also number four. Yeah, that's fair. Um, 
he's one of those guys, again, he's like the spectacle guy. Stats might not look all that good, but when you watch him play, because there's like a thing and they do it all the time in commentary, he has these little Toby moments where like when something is getting close, when the game's close, you're like, what is Toby Green going to do? And it takes like a special type of player to have that kind of impact. We'd be the most famous number four at the tribunal too. I love him down there. <laughs> fine for you, fine for me. That's because I pay you. <laughs> um, let's go around the glass table because I've just realised we haven't done that yet. Um, what was this week's question, Mr. Jack Thomas? Thomas? This one's question: What AFL game have you cried at or cried while watching? Uh, we can't count this weekend, so we're ruling out this weekend altogether. Because I nearly cried. Good, I didn't cry. <laughs> I nearly cried when the Saints got close and then didn't. Um, but the one that I used in terms of the example for the tweet was the one game that I actually actively sobbed my fucking heart out at, and that was Saints vs. Dogs prelim 2009. Yeah. Yeah, like that. I like, I've, I, I've told the story on here already, but like, you know, like mum going in being like, don't cry if we lose, and then Rayol kicks the goal to send us to the grand final, and I start fucking bawling my eyes out. And like mum thinks I have to go to the hospital because I'm having like, <laughs> like a panic attack. Like <laughs> it was it was bad. And I was seven. Imagine if I was like, can you imagine if I was like eighteen and the Saints had just made their first grand final like in my lifetime? I think I would go into a coma because he meant that I would drink that night. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. That's probably just be me now if we ever won a prelim. <laughs> Wouldn't even give a shit about the granny. <laughs> Given the give me the prelim win, um, <laughs> yeah, I, that there's been like good cries and bad cries. Like there's been a lot of heartache ones, mm-hmm. but you sort of don't remember them. You remember the result, but you don't remember how you reacted type of deal. Whereas yeah. the the good cries, like I I could remember round eight two thousand and nine. I've spoken about this game before. What Treaders kick seven, kicks the winner within the last minute to go, and um, just the siren goes. We win the game. Ball my eyes out. I'm like 12 years old. Like it's, it's just, well, it's a round eight game in the middle of the year. But like I'm just so in it. And then, uh, yeah, th- like as late as <laughs> this year, like Hawthorne, we could go on the diet. Not even meant to win. And I'm just the video's out there. But like I lose my voice. <laughs> I, I go back to being 12 years old. And I'm just crying. My sister looks at me and goes, you're a fucking idiot. That's all right. But I'm allowed to be. Yeah. A lot of cries. I, I get that. I like, you're right in that. Like, you remember, like, you more remember the positive cries than anything else. But, like, the closest I got, like, I don't really think I cry that much in, like, losses. I probably cried in 2009 when we lost the grand final. But, again, I I don't really remember that well. Started drinking but- there, did you? Yeah, big drink, big drinking day that one when I was seven. Um, <laughs> Cordy's cordial, <laughs> but the closest, like, this is like the like your one with like the round eight thing. When I last last year gather around Saints Pies, right? Saints are four and oh going in. No, we hadn't given us a chance though because the Collingwood, the Collingwood were very good and we held it right up to them. We kicked the last like three of the game. Gets inside 50 and then the siren goes. And it wasn't like I was crying, but I just had this like melting because I was so locked in. I was like, we're fucking doing it. And again, the video is out there. And I just like, I just, all of me goes and I'm like, fuck. And I reckon I sat like this for like a solid while. Like I, like through both their, both renditions of the Collingwood song, I probably sat just like this. Just like, fuck. I can confirm you did. I was gonna say you were there, you were next to me, and that sucked. That was a tough game to to took watch. A lot like it was to console you. It was a slog. Like it was a just a battle of a game. We were four and all at the time, and I was like, we're riding high, and then we got so close. We almost did the Collingwood thing to Collingwood, and then we lost. And I remember like Brad Kershke to goal with like a minute and a half left to put us a goal down. I'm like, fuck, I'm like, holy yeah. shit! It was. I remember that's what yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were crying. Well you yeah, weren't crying, but you know, you yeah. were I was pretty fucking pissed. <laughs> it, was, it was a very sad day. <laughs> well the only other one I'd throw out there, and there's been a few comments, but um Robbie's Robbie Gray's farewell. 
Now, I don't know if it was because I was about 20 beers deep by that start of the game because the start of the day was you know, silly Saturday for the footy club. So, And then I went from there to watch Robbie's farewell. I was not missing it at all. I was pretty... The elbows were working, you know, just... Well sourced. <laughs> well sourced by the time he got there, yeah. Yeah, so by the end, he was doing his lap of honour and I'm just... Like, it was torrential downpour down the cheeks. <laughs> we're talking incoming millimetres. Like, it was... Yeah, it was sad. Yeah. yeah, that's a tough one for a player. I remember if we asked my mum this question, she would say... Uh, when Robert Harvey got knocked out against Port Adelaide in 2007, because it happened right in front of us at Marvel. Robbie, uh, Robert Harvey, who was very old at the time, he was already very old, and then in 2007 he gets knocked out against Port, and it happens right in front of us, and my mum was bawling her eyes out because she thought that was the last time we should have seen Robert Harvey. And he came back the year after, and it was like, yes! <laughs> Come on, Harvey! <laughs> I thought Jenny was going to cry about Raph Clark retiring. Oh, fucking Raph Clark. Cried tears of joy, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did we have a couple of responses or anything? Or I've got a couple uh, here some, from Retweet. Some Renee. Um, I had some from Renee saying 2014 Port vs Hawks. We've spoken about that game before where like that prelim, which is one of the greatest games of football ever. Port vs Hawks 2024, which is this year's one, like you just said. Port vs GWS at Amy Stadium in 2013. So that's what? Uh, yeah, that was round two. That was, um, yeah, that was emotional, actually. That was the year after John McCarthy passed away. Oh, I was going to say it was the McCarthy one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we, that was a farewell for that. And it was the first year of Ken. So, like, yeah, there's a lot of emotion. That was a tough day, actually. Yeah. Um, and then Port versus Crow Showdown 52. Is that the Motlob one or am I going too far back? If uh, Motlob was 44. 52 would have been Robbie's farewell. That's fair. Majority I mean, of them yeah. are Port fans. We've all cried. Okay. <laughs> all cried for similar we've all ones. Cried. <laughs> Don't worry. We've all had the same one. And there'll be a particular one we won't be mentioning. Anywho. <laughs> how good to happy cry, Jared? <laughs> happy cries are so much better. <laughs> it's all good when your team wins out of nowhere or, you know. Certain players might reach a milestone. It's all good when you know, you have forty seven touches and you wear forty seven on the back of your Guernsey. It's real sexy, Jared. Yeah, fucking. <laughs> yeah. It's real stupid sexy. Is it? Uh... <laughs> and that's what leads me into the segment. Segment I like to call stupid sexy. <laughs> stupid sexy. JFL players. Anyway, Jared, it's tough. It's stupid sexy. AFL time. Yes. Interesting segue. But anyway, that's what I've got written down here for some reason. I really have to learn on my notes. Um, So 50 episodes in, there's been a lot of stupid, sexy things, players, people that we've ventured into. I don't really want to say we've touched into other areas, but we... I knew it was going to take approximately 10 seconds for this to just derail completely. It's fire. <laughs> yep, the heat maps have gone in different places. So, <laughs> it's you know, it's good. It's been fun. I would have written a list, but again, like I said, the best way to go about milestone performances is not to plan them at all. No. So, we've done really well, but we've gone through players galore. Our first two on the list, I'm pretty sure, were Boken. Lipinski. Yep, that probably checks out. Still, um, still, it's still rings true. Oh yeah, Boke's the face of the thing. <laughs> yeah, Boke has been there from the start. <laughs> he won't leave. <laughs> he won't leave. I just imitated screenshot. I just imitated. There's there. Yeah, one of the fifty moments. <laughs> yeah. Screen. Oh, I've got it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> it is stupid sexy, which we're in a segment. So, do you want to choose what your fiftieth edition of stupid sexy is? Yes, I shall. Well, it's actually funny that you talk. Uh, You're picking candy. bike, aren't you? <laughs> that would have been funny. No, it's funny the the wording that you've used 
pretty correctly defines uh, my player today. I I can't remember if we've picked him. I don't think we have. But... You're saying JT, aren't you? No. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Go on. First and I, we have, uh, you just mentioned milestones uh, and, you know, the big, big happenings that we have around here. DJ, like, my man. <laughs> I actually wasn't far off picking him, to be fair. <laughs> we have spoken about him to death so far, so I don't really know. Toby need Bedford. Him. <laughs> Toby's 50. <laughs> I didn't even know that. <laughs> Raiden Maynard. No. I'm <laughs> picking, of course, the classic. And he was he was back probably three years ago. He was like the guy. Every guy wanted to be him and every girl wanted to be with him. And that is Dustin Martin. When he did those Bonds ads, when he like, I, I know the exact ad where he's running down the street, just his underwear. Everyone's like, damn, I want to be that guy. <laughs> and Dustin Martin, you haven't lost it. Yeah. It was nice to see the more emotional side of him on, on Saturday. They let him let himself go. Like, just, you know, let himself enjoy it. And to see him nice and happy and smiling and just soaking it all in, I'm like, Dusty, you ha- you have been and you forever will be a stupid, sexy AFL player. Beautifully put. Yes. And you know what's even better is the fact that Richmond have a buy next week, which means he is somewhere right now still <laughs> kicking on. He's probably already in Bali. <laughs> oh, his car is still at the MCG again. <laughs> and I love it. He could be having 300 different kinds of drinks and it wouldn't matter but in I the hope world. He, I hope he's plastered right at this very second. I hope right now Oh, I hope good. when I send him this clip, he's going to be like, yes, boys, I'm doing the exact thing you've asked for. <laughs> Where is our invite, Dusty? <laughs> I would have gone, please. I, yeah. <laughs> would have definitely been a stupid, sexy time. Let's go on. Um... Yeah, I'm going to ruin the moment now that you've gone with Dusty. <laughs> but I, I'm I'm in my, you know, people talk about how they're in you know, their Taylor Swift era or they're in their eras of tattoos or eras of cooking. I don't know. Um, yeah. We all go around on an eras tour on a different stage of our lives. And at the moment, I'm in my moments era. I really soak in moments whenever they happen. You know, I I talk about like Dusty 300th or, you know, match winning goals or like last week, North Melbourne winning. This week, I've gone for something that really caught my eye and I sit here still and I still applaud it. We ha- all have, and this is a big build up. I don't know why I'm doing this. Yeah, I was going to say, how's the build up on this? My goodness. Don't worry. Bigger than Dusty 300th champion. Ha <laughs> 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 ha. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we, we will have certain skill sets, but when Ruckman can kick goals from the boundary line and turn oh, around and yeah. give it to the crowd, <laughs> Tristan Cherry, you absolute stupid, sexy helmet wearing beast. <laughs> that was unbelievable. And boy, did I froth it. <laughs> I remember watching that today and the fact that he turns around and my favorite thing right is the bloke in the back and it's the classic footy thing right and it's like you know like you know when you see a photo it's like oh look at this no one's got their phones out what a beautiful moment i had that moment today because sherry turns to the crowd there's not one phone out but there is one guy just going (laughs) (laughs) and i'm like it's footy i'm like that image i want to try to find that screenshot because that is just beautiful like that is football. Watching yeah. Cherry turn around, helmet on, and the guy just giving it to him. I'm like, that is that is football in one screenshot, and it's so good. <laughs> it's just like sitting there, and he he got it. The free kick was nothing as well. Like it was no, pure no, nothing. The shit it was it. It, it was a pat on the back, and yeah. he's gone he set on over the board. <laughs> There's that, there's that symmetry the thing. It's the fence, and then just goes a little bit more. <laughs> it was already in the bloody marble car park underneath at that point. But he's just slotted it. Oh. Talk about the eye test. 
The best one. That is the best one. <laughs> I love being in my moments, Sarah. And apparently I love it when North Melbourne are playing too. <laughs> I was going to say, love North. That's the best one. That is so funny. I love that. Like, when that happened, I was like, that's the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm so happy about it. Oh, uh, fuck. So good. And that, and on that bombshell, <laughs> I think we sum it up. Yes. I think we do. I don't know how to, though. 50 episodes. Still going. Still waiting for my pay packet. But, it's been good. Good 50. Raise the... What's your favourite moment? I was saying before, and like you literally just mentioned it again, my favourite things that we do is when we say the same thing at the same time. And so the one that immediately pops to my mind is uh, the week before the grand final when I mentioned that it's going to be 24 on the Saturday and we both at the same time say beer drinking weather. I just think in my mind, <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> I just laugh yeah. every time I think about it. So I'm going to say the beer drinking weather is one of my favourites. I think it's definitely, yeah, that's on par. I have that yep. little symmetry moment. The one that I think, and I heard a lot, the one I think about that makes me laugh, and I think it really started these stupid moments that we have, is you saying... I can't remember the quote, but it was about Luke Jackson. I, fuck. It, I know the quote. The quote is, Luke Jackson can fucking finish me off. And I, <laughs> as soon as I say it, and I know the exact clip you're talking about, I just like sink into my jumper because I knew as soon as I said it, it was just... It's one of the great reactions because we're off screen for like 10 minutes. It's dreadful. It like... It's one of the, it's the classic SpongeBob, like 10 minutes later, because we just couldn't, yeah. I couldn't lock myself back in. After that, it was it. I also loved earlier this year with the, I'm going to stick with the men. That was the funniest thing ever. Like, I just, I thought about that quote for like weeks. <laughs> I couldn't get it out of my brain. <laughs> wait, 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 what? <laughs> Is there something you're not telling us? got my number, bro. <laughs> this is really funny. Uh, so basically, stuff. if I'm going to sum it up, 50 episodes. Yes. We're idiots. Yeah, that's, that's about it. <laughs> that's, that's all we need. I had 49 attempts at trying to sign this stuff off. Failed every time. So should we fail for a 50th? Yeah. So I think like what you should do is it should just like cut off like like when we're talking, we should just basically get through a certain bit and then it should.